Mark, I'm in trouble, man. I can't get my car going. I really need some help bad. Do you think there's anything you can tell me that might help me go a little quicker? A personality that gets lost in NASCAR history is one that a lot of older fans know, but most younger fans don't. Del McCoward is one of the most lovable personalities in the history of stock car racing. He was known as the clown prince of racing in the 80s and 90s, which made him a favorite amongst competitors and fans. The story behind how he got into NASCAR is hilarious. Most people say they got into racing for the love of it or because their family did it, but his is one that I had never heard of before. And the reason why I bought a first, you know, a race car in the first place, all my friends was going to Daytona in order to get into the party you had to own a race car. So I got <laughs> All jokes aside, his introduction into the sport was nearly fatal. Remember that Joe Fasson explosion from the Daytona Sportsman race in 1979? It was actually Delma's car that struck him in the back causing that explosion. Lucky for them, they were both okay and Delma was unfazed. Off the track, he would perform odd jobs which included installing pools and septic tanks to fund his racing career. I had to do that to buy pistons and blocks and camshafts and all that kind of stuff for race cars. After racing in the Sportsman Series for some time, he realized that he could make the jump to the Cup Series with the budget he had. I started out racing Bush and then they cut down the Bush division to one race. And uh, they was at that time it was about uh, I'd say three to five thousand dollars difference between a Bush car and a, and a Winston Cup car. So I stood up in the meeting after that you know, revelation that I was only going to run one race a year and said, look in, y'all making me move up to the Winston Cup division. So I sold my Bush car, built a Winston Cup car and went to Atlanta. And uh, I tried to get in the Atlanta Journal in 1981. That was my first attempt at Winston Cup. I got right in. I said, shoot, there ain't nothing to this. You <laughs> better have me a good time. His debut in the Cup Series would turn out to be the best run of his career as he would finish 18th. The following season, he would attempt his first Daytona 500, and he would actually make the field. This began a trend of attempting most of his Cup Series races on the Super Speedway tracks. The following season, he would crash out of the first qualifying race for the Daytona 500, and he wouldn't make it back until 1985. Up to this point, he had made 13 Cup Series starts along with two Daytona 500s. There was plenty of times he would have to use his odd jobs to good use to fund his own racing, and one of those times included Hall of Famer Junior Johnson. Back then, uh, well, you know, I got some engines from Junior Johnson, and uh, the way I got them was I traded uh, his engine builder a swimming pool for an engine. Wow. Mm. Junior would not sell anybody that was racing against him engines at that particular time. Of course, things has changed drastically now. You got like two only, you know, you got... Chevrolet people build engines, Ford people build engines all together. But back then, each team had their own ind independent uh, engine builder, and you couldn't buy an engine unless you knew somebody, you know. But all racing aside, he was known as a wild partier. That's the reason he got into racing in the first place, was to just party it up with his friends at Daytona. Whether he made the Daytona 500 didn't matter. As long as he partied, he was good to go. First party we <laughs> We rented a restaurant in Norman Beach. Rented the man's whole restaurant. Man. We invited all the race teams. We had a, like five or six race teams. Ron Bouchard's team, uh, MC Anderson's team, my team, and a couple other teams. And we brought a band in from Jacksonville. Uh, and I was the piano player in the band because I, I couldn't afford, you know. You couldn't piano. afford to hire one. Yeah, I figured I could do it and save money. So I did. <laughs> And the party ended up about 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I was taking Dennis Hartzell, one of the race team's body guys, back down to the Pirate place down. Pirate's Cove, I think was the name yeah. of it. And I was going riding in my sponsor's Cadillac. And uh, they was kind of like comatose in the car, you know. And the police stopped me. Wanted to know what I was doing 55 mile an hour. You know, on A1A4, I said, well, you know, the speed limit's 55. He said, no, it ain't on the beach, it's 35. <laughs> so he wrote me a ticket, and we got to talking about the race and all that kind of stuff. And finally, you know, he let me go. One of the big things was really bad. Dennis said he woke up and told a guy that was my car owner in the front seat, said, man, 
wake up, wake up. They got them, and they're going to put him in jail. And the guy that owned my car said, no, nah, they ain't going to keep him long. <laughs> and he was right. Delma made a grand total of 21 starts from 1981 to 1992 in the Cup Series. At the beginning, I said he was the clown prince of NASCAR, but he was also known as the DNQ prince as he had a grand total of 58 career failed attempts. In fact, 1992 was actually Delma's final season he would make any sort of cup race. As the sport grew bigger in the 90s, Delma and his team couldn't keep up, and from 1993 to 1997, he would have a total of 20 failed qualifying attempts. Again, the reason I'm making this video is because Delma Cowart was a character, and it didn't really matter how he performed. Most of the footage for this video is from Delma's 1995 Daytona 500 weekend, and it's one of the most hilarious weekends in racing. After three and a half days at Daytona, he has yet to take a single lap. And you name it, and it has happened to us. The car didn't fit the template. They got a little device they put on the roll cage that measures the thickness of the bars, and they said the bar was 60 thousandths, they're supposed to be 90 thousandths. So they made us put in a new bar. Then they said our roof didn't fit the template, so we had to go back over there and work on the roof till we made it fit. And then they said the back glass didn't fit, so we got the back glass to fit. And then they said that the hood didn't fit. When we cranked the car, we found out we had an oil leak. Then when we got that figured, we cranked it up, and then the carburetor was pouring gas. And then uh, the throttle stuck on the carburetor when I cranked it up. Evidently, we got a bearing coming out of third gear, and that's where I'm at today. Finally, the car is rolled into inspection, but Delma has to be on the track in five minutes or he won't be allowed to run. With just 30 seconds to go, the zero car clears inspection, but it won't start, so we push. It's the race to get into the race. Am I right on the edge or what? Man? You're living on the edge. I'll tell you what, sometimes I think I'm going to fall off too. I really do. Four days later, Delma starts in the last spot in the first of two Daytona 500 qualifying races. If he moves up to 14th, he'll qualify for the Super Bowl of Racing. I would love to win, but deep down in my heart, I know the chances of me winning Daytona 500. Something would have to happen at all 39 guards in front of me before I could win. But if it did happen, can you imagine the fame? The fortune, the commercials. What are you going to do next? I'm going to Disney World! I'm going to Disney World! I'm going to Walt Disney World! I'm going to Disney World! I'm going to Disney World! Man, I'm going to Disney World! And after Disney World? That'd be it, man. I'd wave goodbye to all my friends and tell my children, let's take what I got here. Yeah, I'm moving to Jamaica. You know, that's where it's warm and sunny and nice. 32 cars take the green flag, and by the second lap, Sterling Marlin has the lead. And back, way back, way, way back, Delma is laying low, ready to pounce if there's trouble ahead. But there is none, not a single crash, not a yellow flag. Delma has to move up on his own. When the checkered flag is dropped, Delma is in 29th spot. He moved up three places but not enough to get in the 500. Delma's last season in NASCAR took place in 1997, and it is one of legends. In his first attempt of the season and his final in the Daytona 500, he would wreck Jeffrey Bodine running inside the top five after his car got arrow loose and would miss the 500. His final career attempt came in the 1997 Winston Open, and that is a whole nother story on its own. The thing you asked me about happened in Charlotte. We went up there for the Winston Open, and they invited all the Winston Cup teams to come up. It wasn't a, it was, it was just a money race. It wasn't a points race. It wasn't none of that. So we got there, uh, you know, on time and everything, which is unusual for me because usually I'm late getting in. But I got there on time. I got out on the racetrack about 10.30 that morning and wiped an engine out. Well, I had another engine in the truck, but the problem was I had bought the engine from Rusty Wallace, and he had tilting stuff for the clutch and the start and all that stuff, and I'd been running quartermaster. Make a long story short, them boys worked all day to get it cranked. Finally, they got it cranked about time. They said, gentlemen, start your engines out on the racetrack. I cranked mine up in the garage area. I pulled it out behind everybody out and made about five laps for the black fagnet. <laughs> but my, my theory is, is I went there to race, 
And I worked. They worked all day to race. There was no way in the way I was. No way in the world I wasn't gonna get that car, crank it up, and try to race. After 1997, he would retire from stock car racing, saying it was just a hobby, and at this point, it became way too competitive to try and compete. His most famous quote at his retirement speech was this: "I never won a race." But I never lost a party. Dale McCoward is a true NASCAR legend. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.